So in this video, we're finally going to define voltage and current so we can begin to talk about electrical signals and how they uh, behave. So we'll define voltage and current. It's pretty easy. We're not going to use too much physics here. It's going to be very intuitive, I hope. We'll then talk about the circuit elements. These are elements that act on voltage and current in very particular ways, and these are used to construct real-life analog circuits. So what are voltage and current? So voltage is also called electric potential, and it provides the push for the flow of charged particles. So the idea is that you have a region of positive to negative voltage, and the positive part is supposed to represent that it has a higher potential, electrical potential, than the negative side. So this is downhill if you will. Higher potential where it's positive, lower potential where it's negative. And so generally if you just had a charged particle, a positively charged particle, it would want to go downhill. That's what a voltage does. It provides the push. Voltage has units of volts, uh, usually indicated by a lowercase v, sometimes a uppercase v. Named for Alexander Volta, the Italian who physicist who discovered the battery, by the way. Current is the flow of positively charged particles in the direction that's indicated. So what this means here is that there's a river of, of charged particles flowing this way. Notice the word current is analogous to the flow of water in a stream or a river. And the current is flowing this way. So the interesting thing, though, is that this is the flow of positively charged particles. If you had negatively charged particles, like an electron, flowing in this way, it turns out positive current to the right means the electrons are flowing to the left. Uh, you can blame this convention of giving a negative charge assigned to electron to Benjamin Franklin. Uh, as you probably know, it's the electron it's the workhorse in electricity and we talk about current uh, here as a flow of positively charged particles but the electrons are actually flowing the other way but we don't really care we talk about what's the actual value of the current that we have the unit of current was named for the physicist ampere uh, usually denoted by a capital A um, one volt is not a very big voltage uh, I'm going to show you some batteries in a second and they're typically one and a half volts. Uh, one ampere of current, though, is a lot of current. Uh, typically, in most circuits, you can range from the microamp range to the milliamp range. Uh, one ampere occurs in uh, things that are coming out of the wall, for example. You can supply a lot of current with, uh, in a, out of a power socket. Now, how the charged particles actually flow uh, to uh, in response to an applied voltage depends on the conducting medium. We're going to go through several circuit elements in R and it, the laws of physics determine how the voltage and current are related to each other. So it's not always true that if you have a positive voltage, like I've indicated over here, that the electrons all with the, rather the positively charged particles always flow that way. That's not true. It depends on what's in between. And we'll see that in just a second. So um, let's define uh, a convention here. So here we have a generic circuit element. Don't know in detail what it is, but there's a very important convention here. And that is if you define the voltage to be plus to minus that way, you want to define positive current as going in the positive side of the voltage. This is a convention that's extremely important to follow while we're getting used to circuits and, and how to think about them. This does not mean that the voltage V is going to wind up being a positive number. The way you assign voltage is up to you. It could turn out that once you put it in the circuit and you figure out how it works, the voltage is negative. And it could, of course, turn out that the current is negative, too. But in order to define what we call the VI relations, the relationship between voltage and current that a given circuit element imposes 
we must go by this convention. So let's talk about some rather simple circuit elements first. The first is just a wire. So you notice the word here, ideal. This is an ideal wire. So an ideal wire lets any current flow that the circuit wants to flow with no voltage drop. The voltage is zero. Current is essentially pushed through here with no uh, electric potential being required. This is an ideal wire. This is in fact what a superconductor is. It allows current flow with no voltage uh, to be applied, no voltage drop. Um, a real wire has a small resistance and does not behave like this at all, but this is what we use in circuits. This is an, a model of an ideal circuit element, what we call the short circuit, that lets any current go at all, but the voltage drop is zero. And you know, guess that there's also an open circuit, which um, is what I call a dead wire, which in this case there's no current flowing uh, because it's open, it's free space if you will in between, but there is a voltage drop and the voltage drop can be anything that the circuit in which this open circuit is found can occur. Um, so the important point here is that in an open circuit there is no current flow through the open area, I equals zero. Okay, well let's talk about something that actually does something. Uh, perhaps the simplest circuit element is the resistor. And here, voltage and current are proportional to one another, and the constant of proportionality is the resistance R. So one ohm is a volt divided by an amp, one ampere. One volt divided by one ampere is one ohm, and the symbol for an ohm is a capital omega. Um, so, very simple circuit element, um, as we'll see when I show you some real ones in just a second. The capacitor uh, is a bit more interesting. Uh, the symbol for a capacitor is this uh, set of lines going into what looks like two perpendicular lines. The VI relationship is that the current is proportional to the derivative of voltage. And that constant proportionality is the capacitance, which is measured in farads. Farads is named for Michael Faraday, the very important uh, 19th century experimental physicist. Now, how do you build a capacitor? Well, it turns out the symbol for the capacitor gives it away. If you had two parallel plates and you put leads to them and applied a voltage uh, to it or put it in a circuit, what's happened is that charge wants to accumulate on this plate. Uh, and it may, the current actually doesn't flow through, it doesn't jump across those plates, but current can slosh back and forth as if it were uh, flowing through the circuit element. And it turns out the capacitance C is equal to the dielectric constant of the medium that's in between times the area of the plates divided by the distance between them. So um, in order to get the capacitance up you have to have a big area and or a very small distance between the two plates. Now to give you an idea about scale here, a one farad capacitor is huge, it's gigantic as the way the units all work out. Uh, typically um, capacitors are in the millifarad, that's a pretty big capacitor even, microfarads even, nanofarads and even picofarad uh, capacitors uh, are found in lots and lots of circuits. But that's the way they're constructed out of parallel plates. This goes back to what I said about the nature of the medium for the um, circuit element defines the VI relationship. 
resistor is probably the simplest medium. The capacitor is an interesting uh, medium too, but it has a bit more complicated VI relation. And then finally, there's the inductor. Uh, inductors are uh, the symbol here for an inductor is supposed to resemble a coil of wire, has an inductance L, which is measured in Henry's, and for Joseph Henry, the American 19th century physicist. And it has the VI relationship, the voltage is proportional to the derivative of current. In some sense, it's the opposite of a capacitor. And if you use the laws of physics to figure out how voltage and current are related when there's a coil of wire, you'll discover and to a good approximation, the voltage is proportional to the derivative of the current. So, um, inductors are uh, found, for example, in, co in uh, automobiles. When you talk about the coil in automobile, it turns out it's a big inductor. Okay, so let me show you some resistors. So, here's a photograph I took of a set of resistors I happen to have. I want you to notice, first of all, they're all the same size no matter how big the resistance is. So this is the actual resistance of each of these circuit elements, uh, resistors rather, uh, going all the way from 10 ohms to 1 mega ohm. I want to hold up a resistor to give you an idea of the size. This happens to be the 1 mega ohm resistor that uh, I showed you in the uh, photograph here. And you can see it's pretty small. The size of the resistor determines how much power it can dissipate. These turn out to be one quarter watt resistors. And we'll talk about the power considerations in a second. Well, how did I know that these